Welcome to this third sub-module presentation of the Copernicus Land Monitoring Service, which present the high-resolution forest layer and how to make use of that for assessing, for example, storm damages or other forest-related damages. So, as an introduction, one can probably highlight that this high-resolution forest layer product is a 20-meter resolution product, which is available for all of Europe meaning it's basically all of the European 28 member state coverage plus the cooperating states of the European Environment Agency, so that's most of Europe, including Turkey. The dataset comprises different kinds of tree and forest information, predominantly the tree cover density product, which I'll show later, and the forest type product, and it helps in assessing damages in forests that do occur for many reasons, both for natural reasons and, and human-induced reasons. So there can be pests, there can be fires, there can be bark beetle, there can be snow and ice damage, there can be storms, floodings, whatsoever, fires of course. So to assess these damages in a rapid manner and in a thorough manner is definitely a challenge and it's also an asset if administrations, local administration, governments are able to do that quickly because it helps them to quantify that damage at an early stage and also to limit the losses of, of wood and, and related um, uh, money, of course. So this module will provide an example how such an assessment of a storm damage could look like in a concrete case. So let's assume we have a case that a forest owner association, let's say in Germany, wants to assess the damages caused by a significant storm. So we've had a storm damage event in 2015 in Germany, south of Munich, and the storm was called Niklas. It came in April, March, April 2015, and it caused severe damages in, in the forests. So the um, further slides will also present you the concept, how to do this forest damage assessment, and how to make use especially of the Copernicus data that are available to really do that in a quick and in an efficient manner. So that storm which I mentioned was um, something that originated nearby Iceland. It lasted for several days with wind speed maxima of about 190 kilometers per hour and it caused a forest damage of about 2 million cubic meters, which is quite a bit. Uh, related estimated damages relate to about 750 million euro, so that's quite significant. Um, in this case, it's been really crucial to have really rapid information on where the damages occurred to remove the timber to prevent further infestations by bark beetle and to prevent further losses. Data that are used in this assessment are basically the high resolution forest layer products with both the sub um, types, tree core density and forest type. We make use of true color image mosaics, which are available in very high resolution from 2012. And we use also very high resolution multispectral satellite data additionally, which have been acquired before the storm event and after the storm event to make the comparison. So first I'm going to show you how to download these Copernicus forest products, then how to perform catalog searches for additional earth observation data, how to do basic calculations of indices like the normalized difference vegetation index, NDVI, and how then to come to classifications of the actual damage areas and damage distributions. So first to download the high resolution forest layer products, you access the Copernicus land monitoring portal. The address is given here. You select the continental component and then you select the high resolution layers as encircled here in red. Next step is to select the forest layer, which is one out of the five layers imperviousness, forest, grassland, wetlands, and permanent water bodies. So it covers the most area in terms of overall percentage of Europe and um, there's these two different kinds of products, tree cover density and forest type, and we select and download both of them. The tree cover density being a product with, with a 20 meter spatial pixel resolution, which provides 
information on the density of tree cover per 20 meter pixel given in a range between 0 and 100 percent, so derived by sophisticated algorithms. And it can be, of course, grouped to, to two categorical uh, classes, which is tree areas and non-tree areas, and can be also arranged other ways. The second product is the forest type product, which is also based on 20 meter satellite data, but has a minimum mapping unit of half a hectare. Currently, this is going to change in the future, where this will be also resolved to 20 meter only resolution with the next implementation step. It has a covered range of 10 to 100 percent tree cover density conforming to the FAO forest definition and it has three thematic classes which is non-forest on the one hand and it discriminates the forest into broadleafed and coniferous forest species. Next data set we're going to look at is the pan-European image mosaics which can be accessed also via the portal on that left button. There's the high resolution and the very high resolution versions for our purposes, we take the very high resolution because we want to see the damages in a lot of detail. And there's the true color image version which can be downloaded and also included as a web mapping services. When you look at that encircled button, that green one here, you can introduce that into your GIS environment. So that web mapping service has this uh, notion and you can pick there the address which is given here to also integrate it and link it to your GIS software. Additional to the image data that are available via the Copernicus services which are updated at regular intervals, typically at three years intervals, you will need for the exact assessment also acquisitions which are very close to the event. So preferably an acquisition very close before the event and an acquisition very close after the event. For that, you can use additionally commercially available satellite data. Of course, they are not free of charge, but um, it depends on the application um, and the area that you need. And there are several available. Here we've selected just one provider. And in their archives, you can go to a geostore. You can do a, and perform a search. You can specify the area of interest. You can select a time step and you can specify exactly which kind of data you want in terms of spectral properties, in terms of sensors. Then you get a search result, you select the data, you can buy the data and download them. So for our purposes, we have here first the freely available data from the Copernicus, which we use as an overview for getting acquainted with the area. So we see here, this is the city of Munich and in the south we have a lot of forest areas and um, we have a special area of interest just to show the principle of the uh, detection here. We have here the true color Copernicus image underlying and the forest layer added on top which is the green encircled areas here. So all this basically which is in the confines of the green outline is the mapped and defined forest. So on this slide you see the high resolution forest layer overlaid as a green outline on the optical image data from the Copernicus 2.5 meter web map service. And basically everything that's encircled by that green outline comprises forest area as mapped by the high resolution forest layer. As a next step we take the 20 meter forest type product which we also add on top so you see the bright green areas which is the broadleafed forest areas and the dark green areas which represents coniferous forest. And on top we have now these additional image scenes that have been acquired from commercial providers. Here we have a spot 6 scene with one and a half meter spatial resolution which has been acquired before the event in summer 2014. It shows a false color image representation so basically areas that are shown here in red do represent green vital vegetation. So these relate either to areas of agricultural activity outside the forest or to broadleafed forest within the forest stand. And the dark areas which are shown here in darkish red colors are um, coniferous forest stands which are typically very much darker because they absorb more light. So on top we have that post-event scene and you can when comparing these two scenes, you can already 
recognize there's areas of blue introduced here. So these are the areas where the storm has really hit the forest and where timber got laid down. And um, this is an, an acquisition from summer 2015. And you see these, these yellow encircled areas do clearly indicate already where the damaged areas roughly are located. But that's not enough. We want to have it mapped really in a, in a more detailed fashion. So what we can do is calculate a vegetation index. In this case, we have the normalized difference vegetation index, which is very simple to calculate. Formula is given here. You just divide a subtraction and an addition of the near infrared and the red um, satellite bands. And that gives you a relatively good representation of the density and healthiness of vegetation. So the areas which have reddish, yellowish colors do sh show a high normalized different vegetation index, whereas the bluish and purple tones show a low NDVI value. So that can be done for uh, the time before and after the um, event. And of course, then you can calculate the difference between these two different time steps. And this is shown exactly here. So wherever you have not the medium green tones, there has been a change occurring. Of course, one needs to be a bit careful because this comparison is sensitive to various effects, also to image acquisition conditions, to image co-registration accuracy and so on. So you need to be a bit careful here. Also to viewing angles and vegetation phenology, which is not so problematic if you have a similar season in the year for the forest. But you basically see that you can recognize the differences quite well. Also encircled here again. If you do this, this difference calculation, um, you can also apply certain thresholds for saying, OK, I regard this as a significant change. And this is probably not a change, but just a variation. And when you do all that, you come up with such a map which shows you exactly the detected damage areas just in that short section. You could extend, of course, that exercise to a bigger area. And um, in more detail, you can see what has been changing. So there have been really areas laid down where the timber has really been cut by the storm. And it's fuzzy shapes. It's not very plain and, and rectangular. So it's very clear that this has been just dependent on the wind direction, wind speed, and local wind conditions. And just as a summary, what uh, has been found after the event, there's assessments been made for that concrete case. And there were altogether 5.7 hectare of damaged forest just found in that very area, out of which 97.5% were found to be related to coniferous forest stands, which is not so surprising because these coniferous forests do have very shallow roots and um, they're very susceptible to such kinds of forest damage events caused by storm and by, by wind. Thanks for your attention. Hope you've enjoyed the session.